Hey, this is uh, Sector 7. Real quick, um, me and a buddy of mine are going to go over our, our two kits. We just got done running a couple drills, so I thought it was a good chance for us to run over everything top to bottom, and uh, we'll get into that real quick. All right, so we'll start with rifle, because that's kind of the prettiest thing. Um, mine is really not to its... Uh, best specs at this time it's not exactly what I would want out of a rifle but it's what I have um, the rifle itself is fine but once you start getting into stuff like ancillary like night vision stuff like that things get really expensive really quickly so this is a um, this is a Geisley super duty upper and matched upper receiver with the rail so it's a little bit different than their normal mark 16 because the uh, the anti-rotation tabs go straight into the upper receiver, kind of like a 416 does. And then just front to back, uh, I like to run Surefires. I don't have any Surefire suppressors yet, but when I do get a suppressor, I want to have that cross compatibility with other people who run them. I have a Surefire dual fuel that I've gone ahead and put a Malkov E2 XTL head on, the larger light output head. It's like 66,000 Candela. It's a lot better than Surefire standard lights because th I got this light before they released the turbos. And um, a lot of people have been doing different um, lens covers and lens caps on their lights lately with like 100 concepts, stuff like that, which are really cool. I still have a um, old Surefire lens cover for their legacy like Millennium lights that fits really well over the E2 XTL head. So if I have a negligent discharge on my light, it'll actually off-put just the low-spectrum red light instead of nothing. And then that kind of gives me the opportunity to have something shining if I have, have to shine um, into the woods. And I can also identify things like animals. I can shine it through the woods without giving myself away too much, but still like brighten up animal, you know, get that, um, get that glint from animal eyes and then just pop it open for the white light. And then right here, this is the, the least, my least favorite part of the entire gun is my App PLC. Um, I got back when I first started getting into night vision before I really knew any better. And um, they're just, like plenty of people have said it, they're just basically the most anemic laser that you could possibly have. It's pretty much the lowest grade laser that I would recommend somebody get, but um, for the price, they're, completely uh, overpriced for what they are from MSRP um, and their resale value is about just a little over half of what you'd pay for them retail so never pay for them retail. Uh, just some rail scales right here in a um, reverse BCM grip for that extra grip. Um, I got the Surefire dual pressure pad. Bringing it up to the optic I like to keep a 1.7 uh, Badger Comp Condition 1 mount with the old uh, old school Vortex Razor. Especially out in our environment, I recommend having the ability to do some magnification, um, but prioritizing uh, 1X, really, because there's so few spots where you do have to shoot out to the distance that having something that does prioritize 1X is a good option. So if you're gonna go with an LPVO, something like a Vortex Razor is pretty awesome. I use a Geisley um, supercharging handle instead of the ACH just because it's got that extended latch so there's a little bit more for me to grab onto than the ACH. And then pretty much just the rest standard stuff, SOP mod enhanced uh, stock, BCM, HRF concepts, magwell, we got like your Geisley maritime bolt catch and Geisley mag release and everything. So uh, Inside, one last thing, I do have an old school they don't make them anymore, they discontinued them a long time ago, but um, Daniel Defense Chrome Bolt, which I've had for like seven years and is excellent. I wish that they still made them, but they don't make those anymore. So here's my helmet kit. Not much different on it than uh, from other people. Uh, pretty standard. I use RNVGs um, because I wanted binos, but I didn't have the cash to get articulating binos. And I like them a lot in terms of the specs of the RNVGs and in terms of the simplicity. I will say I've ran into multiple situations where I would have benefited from having articulation. So that's something that I'm looking for, uh, forward to in the future. I keep my battery pack just kind of looped under the Wilcox lanyards right here. Um, 
and normally I'll just keep it looped under all of this cordage that's attached to the to the helmet itself and then pull it in when I need to. I like to run it on batteries rather than or I like to run it on battery packs rather than batteries because I know if it's plugged in it'll work and if it's not plugged in it won't work because I don't want to ruin my seven thousand dollar investment. Coming over to the side, I've got the Comtax with the, um, I don't know, the little Grantham wire holders on the side. This, these are dual Comtax, so I've only got one because I bought a set of two and the other one's on my uh, loose pair of Comtax, but I like to keep that right here. And then I keep one more, uh, one of the common wires for my left ear loose because this is what I'm most likely going to be using because the only time I'm ever going to use dual comms is like, a big airsoft game or something. Um, I use the low profile battery pack in conjunction with the Faro Concepts PVS31 battery pack holder, which is awesome. Super cool piece of kit. Uh, I've got my little designator right here and my American flag. Um, in terms of the actual suspension, it's a little bit different than some people do as well, because I don't like the OC dial, the OCC dial. Um, I might have, I just have a weird shaped head so the standard issue OCC dial kind of jams into my temples. So I like to run a normal H nape and then just run the pads internal. That way I can also switch things in and out if I want to go ahead and take off these um, helmet mounted ear pro and switch over to under the helmet ear pro. So belt line stuff, I was talking about it with my medic buddy earlier. It's, it, it is really situationally dependent. Since the majority of what I do is more civilian oriented, I love to run a belt, but you run into problems when you start plussing it up with things like rucks, you know, plate carriers, stuff like that. But generally, the first thing I am going to throw on, especially if it's a short duration uh, type situation, <clears throat> is going to be a belt, just because my reloads are faster and it's my little Batman toolkit. So uh, I think I've gone over this before, but there's been a couple of small changes, so I'll be quick about it. I still keep the 45. Uh, magazine right here. I like to keep either a multi-tool or a handheld light. The handheld light pretty much is non-negotiable for me just because I've had multiple situations where you know <clears throat> I haven't wanted to aim my gun at people that I'm trying to identify. Two uh, Kiwi mag pouches right here. It's empty because I was kind of running some drills earlier but normally I keep one full and if I got a plus up I'll put another one on there and then I've got a T-Rex med kit with their they've got the integrated um got the integrated tourniquet holder on the bottom but i also plussed it up to an additional tourniquet on the top and it's pretty much just got a bunch of israeli bandages in there and gauze um, and then i like to keep my knife on the front this is the knife that goes with me everywhere whether i'm in civvies or i'm in kit so i don't want it permanently affixed to the belt so the way i have it set up right here in the front it sits nice and um, sits nice and still on once I have it up against my body, and it sits underneath my fanny pack. And then I've got my Safari Land with my Glock, and I've got my glove holders from uh, Haley Strategic. 100% um, not negotiable item I will always carry on me is a fanny pack. I don't like to plus things up in my actual uniform that much. Like the most I normally will carry inside my uniform is um, stuff like tourniquets, which I've got one in my left pocket right now. But in this, this is where I keep my, my tape card. So I've got a bunch of tape wrapped around this that I can use for small field repairs, stuff like that. I've got cold shower wipes. So these are cool little field towels if you need to wipe your ass real quick. Additional uh, multi-tool, a lighter and a sharpie so that this is kind of for range work stuff like that i always whip this out when i'm at the range it's like one of the reasons why this is such a non-negotiable um inside here right now i've just got my old school lens attic compass i probably need to get a new one because i've had this since like 2008 and then some more writing utensils and a right in the room so that's my my belt kit the kit that'll basically go with me no matter what i'm wearing um, I recently swapped over to the AVS from the SPC. I still think that the SPC is 
pretty much one of the best plate carriers out there, but I just wanted to try out something with an internal frame, mostly because of my old back injuries. I wanted to see if I could have something that could comfortably um, share the load a little bit more. And I've been really enjoying it a lot. There's a couple quirks about the AVS that I'm not a huge fan of, but overall it's a sweet plate carrier. So looking at it um, in the front, I've got my admin panel. And inside my admin panel, I keep way too big of a map of my AO. And then I got a little dead rag for Airsoft. I've got map markers and everything, and I've got my extra batteries. Um, I'd recommend putting batteries in a caddy instead of just letting them float around so that they don't discharge when they bang into each other. But right now that's what I got. And then um, <clears throat> standard Comtac Peltor PTT is really my favorite PTT out of the ones I've tried. Um, it's just a no frills, easy option. Um, interfaces really well with kit. So I keep that right here and I keep it um, tied on with a little bit of cord on the back tied to the molly right here so it doesn't come slipping loose. The standard cry triple uh, front, the flaps, I believe it's just the cry M4 flap, carries three M4 mags. Uh, I've got my LARPer radio right here. This is just basically a beefed up Bao Fing that transmits at a slightly higher wattage. Um, just something I've been playing with, not not a big combo guy. It's really more for just LARPing with people and keeping that situational awareness with other friends of mine that have them. I've been experimenting with running the AVS with pretty much a single band and then the standard um, harness rather than having a cummerbund and that is not working out very well for me because it's easy for this band to come out and just flap, flop past that single band uh, when you're doing stuff. So I'm definitely going to be moving back into using probably a two band or a three band cummerbund right here. I've got my med kit. Uh, for me, I'm an infantry guy. I haven't done CLS in like 10 years. Um, I pretty much prioritize all my, I'm not going to break it all the way open, but almost all my meds are prioritized towards um, extremity gunshot wounds. I've pretty much carry uh, a bunch of tourniquets, Israeli bandages, Curlex, gauze, and stuff like that. I've got decontamination kit in here. Um, I've got some medical shears and I've got some lens wipes and I've got some Hemcon bandages in here as well. On the right side over here, this is where I've got the uh, cummerbund basically permanently affixed. So it'll actually um, affix to the inside of the of the plate bag, the front plate bag. And I keep a multi-tool. I like to have redundancy, so I generally have like a multi-tool on my plate carrier. I have one in my chest rig. I have one in my ruck, etc. Because you just, you can never pretty much have too many multi-tools. They're easy to lose, and um, they're really important to use when you need them, so. And then I've got a smoke grenade right here. This is just kind of a, <clears throat> general purpose pouch. I can plus it up with additional ammo if I need to, stuff like that. That's the thing I love about those uh, those spud pouches from Spiritus. And then on the back, always I always keep at least one pair of zip cuffs on me, uh, just from old habits. I've got the Haley flat pack. I'm probably going to remove this just because I played around with putting putting my ruck on and everything over the flat pack and even with it fully flattened there's just too much mass right here to keep it comfortable um, especially with the way the AVS is designed it's really not that comfortable with a rucksack but this is where I keep my um, source bladder and it's a two or three liter source and it's generally I would expand this portion right here to keep my night vision which I'm probably going to end up changing to um, going back to the kind of old school way of carrying your night vision on your cummerbund just for ease of access. That's my plate carrier right there. All right, we're gonna go over the old helmet. So, big prize, this is a uh, revision. The, the Galventech helmet came in. Uh, I think they're pretty comfortable. It comes with the standard little interior liner here, it's pretty nice. Uh, Team Wendy bow closure on the retention system. On the outside, I've got an ops core cover for it. Uh, patches that you can see there. Amps on the amp arms. The battery pack on the back is a standard 31 battery pack. Have it tied down with some paracord. 
cable runs to the front. We've got a Princeton Tech, uh, it's called the Charge, on the uh, side there. It's got red, white, and blue. It's pretty nice. Mantis Strobe. I take this off for like 90% of everything. It's pretty much never on there. It's just it's on there right now. Uh, 31s in the front on a G24 mount. G24 is tied down just like that. 31s have got the standard tension from the side rails. Uh, and then got some camo foam to kind of break up their outline under nighttime. Big black silhouette on the side of a sort of camouflage helmet. Doesn't really do you too well when you're looking around. Yeah, that's the, that's the helmet. It's pretty, pretty standard, super easy. So what do you like more about the amps and the Peltors? Uh, honestly, so the, the biggest draw for me is the arms themselves. They're kind of like a secondary attention point for the helmet. Uh, I like having the strap to secure the helmet, keep it on your body. But for the most part, the majority of the, the tension on your head is maintained through the pad system and the amp arms themselves. Yeah. I know you can kind of like jerry-rig it with the Peltors, but these are kind of like an like a inbuilt system. And they sound pretty nice, so that's kind of how I, I've had them for a while. These are three years old or been run through pretty well. Yeah, one of the problems that you get with these um, these unity mounts on the Peltors is that they're permanently putting pressure in on the side of your head and there's no way to relieve it. And if you try to pull them off, most of the time they have so much tension on them they can pull the entire Peltor arm off. So n almost nobody actually takes them off. You just keep them on at all times. Well, yeah. The good thing about it is that I can roll without a chin strap sometimes, like just with the pressure of the of the contacts on there and the, the mount and everything. But yeah, that's that, nice. that these, works. These stow super nice as well. So like you can actually peel them out, roll them around, put them on your head. Yeah. These guys stow up top. All right. So I don't wear a belt. I don't really believe in belts. Um, not that I don't believe in belts. It's just that I find that I want to be able to put a, a ruck on or some other uh, like ancillary system and I find that rucks get in the way, uh, not rucks, my apologies, belts get in the way a little bit. I do run a fanny pack and it carries everything that my belt would carry. So I've got iPro in there, a Shimog face mask, some gloves, a headlamp, which is very important, right, put that on right away, some batteries in a little container, that way they don't discharge, a secondary light, it's paracord in the front. Oh, I should have fucking done that. And what? My fucking headlamp, dude. It wasn't on my kit. It was with my ruck. <laughs> yeah, this is the headlamp. It's a Princeton Tech Viz. I've used it for almost three years now. It's fantastic. If you don't have a headlamp, you're wrong. Yeah, this is a, uh, an Eagle Industries uh, ERB, I want to say. On the back side, I carry Tom shears and an extra Sharpie. Super easy. You can throw it on and off, you can spin it around, so if you don't want to have kit in your front, if you're bending over a lot, you can wrap around from your side, put it in your back. Run with it, it's not too much of an issue. And if you need to downgrade, you can always downgrade real quick, it's one buckle. Alright, so for the rig, the base is a Cry Precision SPC. Uh, front panel is a Spirit Systems Mark V, I want to say, Mark V rigs. Uh, with three inserts, blue force gear, 10 speed on the on the front there, a Faro Roll One uh, medical kit. On the outside, I've got two tourniquets here, a little SSC bag that I tuck away for trash, uh, and then a knife. On the top, we've got another Faro admin pouch. Inside of it is a multi-tool. I've got a pen, pencil, and a sharpie. Get all three of your. Uh, food groups there, and then a right in the rain, as well as some liquid IV. Uh, it's drip drop. It's nice to have in case you start to cramp up a little bit. You can add to your water. On the sides, I've got a general purpose pouch. It's got a GPS, and then a lighter with some electrical tape wrapped around it, just to have easy access to some tape. You don't need your lighter for it. Always use to have a lighter. And then I've got a little bit more battery storage and I've got them separated out, so I've got enough to resupply the 31s. I've got two for the laser systems, I got two for the flashlight, and I've got a few more for the laser here. Or anything else that uses CR123, so if it's like an EOTech, I can replace those if I need to. Uh, that's on the outside. I've got a smoke pouch with nothing in it. I've got a tourniquet pouch on the outsides, 
On this side, a another one of those multi-purpose pouches, so it's a cry precision. It's designed for the 152. You can also fit two magazines in there as well. Um, I can put that in there to make six. And this is a another one of the cry pouches. I carry a Nalgene in there, 500 milliliters. This can get replaced out. I can move the magazines to a pocket, or if I do put on a belt for a reason, I need to have that kind of magazine's capacity um, and run a radio at the same time. I can put the radio on there. I don't have a dedicated radio setup that I have with this. And then another tourniquet on the outside. Back panel is completely empty. Run it slick. That way I can run the aid bag on the outside or an assault pack or what have you. It can all sit pretty flush and readily be removed. No snagging. On top, we got the axle. Uh, Shoulder pads, the structural shoulder pads, and I think these are these are a dream. But How overall, did you do that padding, uh, like that on the inside? Padding. So yeah, so this is a this is the Home Depot mod. Um, basically, I went to Home Depot, I got the foam padding uh, that they sell for the gym floors, and then I drew out my plate, cut it out, and then I put in little air pockets. Uh, just add a little bit more rigidity to the the plate bag itself, and then it gave me some capacity for airflow so it's got flow throughout the entire like, the plate system there and it doesn't add a whole lot it's added like a quarter inch of thickness I didn't really see that as too much of an issue um, and adds a whole lot of comfort and on the sides I've got uh, the Ferro Concepts I didn't go with plates yeah the plates are uh, generic issue plates with a uh, SNS precision cover on them with those little foam uh, pads sides are uh, I want to say they're Ferro Concepts or not Pharaohs, excuse me, Velocity Systems. Uh, That's and cry, cry pouches. I'm actually, real quick, um, in my plate bags, I feel like I got gypped because I've got the, um, I've got the little uh, first spear yeah. plate pockets, and these things were like 40 or 50 bucks. Yeah, you can, you can buy a whole gym floor for yes. like 80 bucks, yeah. and that's making... Yeah. 20 sets of these little things. I just bought one panel and that was enough to make four sets. So Now the one thing I do, I run velocity plates. These things are amazing because of how thin they are. Yeah, that's what the uh, side plates are. They're the velocity, um, yeah. the API, whatever the... They're crazy, they're lightweight, they're nice. And they add some more rigidity to it. So like this carrier, when it's built together, it can stand up on its own. All right, so this is a this is my the rifle that we use today. It's a URGI upper on an LMT lower. It's got a... Razor 1 to 6 on it that I just got. It's super fun. Uh, I'm still getting used to it a little bit. I don't, my eyes are terrible, so going back and forth between the healthy view is not always ideal. Uh, I run an NGAL, the LA23 laser for night vision use. I've got a Cloud Rain 3, and we mentioned earlier the, the covers. I got the 100 Concepts cover on top of it. The and Cloud's then, on. It is on? Oh, it's alive again. <laughs> it was dead earlier. It was dying. But it's come back to life. Uh, Sam N S suppressor uh, on a flash hider leave it on there it's gonna be terrible to take off um, internally there's there's nothing really special about it it's a generic nail defense bolt uh, the Geisley super 42 braided system with a h2 buffer on it uh, it's a mid lane gas system so you know the h2 might be a little bit overkill but I like the uh, with the suppressor I like having like the actual recoil mitigation um, slows down the the action of the rifle. Uh, a Geisley, the ACH charging handle that comes with the URGI. And that's, yeah, that's it. I like the B5 grip, B5 stock, overband for the sling. And that's all she wrote. Uh, our guns are really kind of two peas in a pod, and I think that that's for good reason. I mean, people, you're starting to see people standardize their loadouts kind of across the board. Um, LPVOs are all the rage, but they I tend, I tend to recommend that people make two rifles. Like, you need to have two rifles because um, Red Dot is still king in my eyes. Like, it's really nice to be able to switch over to something like that. Um, if I was to, like, grab... Let me grab my other rifle real quick. This is my grab-and-go kind of rifle, and I was wondering with you... Like out of those two rifles that you run, which one is your would be your general? This rifle? is generally the, the one I grab. Uh, where I live, I'm not super worried about anything long range. This yeah. is a little bit more manageable. I can get into a smaller bag. Uh, transportation is more of an issue for me than like overt use. So I want to have the capabilities of a rifle, but don't always want to be 
screaming that I have a rifle, so having this be able to fit into a small area mm -hmm. is a little more meaningful than having it be a fully kitted. Uh, this bad Larry here. Yeah. Um, I'll usually transfer the suppressor over, but for me, 11.5 does everything that I needed to do. Um, I can downgrade this pretty quick. I can remove the, the uh, magnifier and make it night vision ready. I can peel off the front cap to allow more passive aiming. Same thing with the NGAL. I've set up exactly the same way. It's the same grip style, same position, um, same activation. So I get the secondary pressure pad on top by using the primary nipple there. Um, I like having the same like level of, uh, so what's, what's the word? Redundancy? Not redundancy. They're not run under rifles. They're independent rifles, but they run very, uh, they have lots of parallels. So mm -hmm. the grip placement is identical. The flashlight placement is identical. The blazer placement, all the stuff is identical. That way I can pick up either and uh, they provide new capabilities depending on what I need them to do but they all feel the same regardless. And this is running a more reliable light, the uh, the mod light here. Yeah. I like that guy. And one thing you don't have to worry about that I have to worry about is um, your pressure pad ripping. Um, that wire rips and now you've got no light whatsoever. So I tend to kind of baby this rifle so that that doesn't happen, but it's always, I mean, I've literally done it in the woods before. So you've got the redundancy on there with that push cap. Yep. Um, the only reason I don't run mine with the with the light with the push cap like that is I just don't like having my light on my left side. Like it feels uncomfortable rubbing against my gear, and it's just a training issue, really. I guess so, yeah. Um, but being able to just access those buttons and reach over and everything, grab it's really nice. This would be my grab and go rifle right here as well. Um, what made you go with like a T2 or is that a T2? T2. Um, yeah, most of the stuff I've. I've try to decide so that it's a as like simple as possible so like the light there's no no other worry about wires coming loose i don't have to worry about buttons not working that day or anything being finicky like oh i got to tape up the the pressure pad to make sure it fits right um this is super simple the laser is super simple i'm activating off of the body of the laser this is a secondary uh mode of activation the t2 i i can leave it on it's always ready to go um it's got good passive night vision not as good as the eotech but it's it's still more than enough um, and then the magnifier is just to add a little more capabilities for PID or anything like that. Um, but it's very simple. The idea of this is a super simple rifle. It's yeah. not going to be seven wires that I've got to navigate with crazy rail covers and all sorts of good stuff. It's very streamlined, I feel like. Very streamlined. Pretty much, I mean, pretty much perfect, too, in my opinion. I mean, those, um, I, I really do like to have magnification as an option. But it's just disgusting. Like the standard magnifier, how it flop, uh, how it goes out to the right and just becomes this giant snag yep. hazard. But with that Unity Center, uh, flip to center, it's like I'm gonna have to get some money together and get one of those as soon as possible. Yeah, it's so slick. The only thing I don't like about this is that with the night vision, um, you'll see this, this can run to an issue if you're doing any kind of like weird oblong shooting. Um, I usually take this off when it goes to nighttime, so I take it off, put it into a pocket. Uh, but during the day, this is nice to have for identification of stuff. And then here's like the, the total grip there. So I've got top grip for most of my shooting, activation of white light there. It's a positive click as well as a temporary push. And then with the laser in case I've got to roll the rifle all the way and not able, able to get a full purchase on the, the top of the, the nipple there. Right. So if you're like doing barricade work or you're doing some work from the prone yeah, it's like and super you've got low. a roll, you can still access that pressure pad. Yep. And it also gets easier if I got to like swing the rifle out. Uh, into the side there. It's a little bit easier to get access to the activation of the laser. So no matter what position I can roll it to, and it's got the the positive thing of, of being a uh, ambidextrous kind of rig. And so, yeah, that's everything. You got two pretty well thought out kits uh, from Sector 7. I got my buddy here with me today and um, probably going to steal a couple ideas from him as well. But uh, yeah, these are just our two kits.